Hi. In this video, we will look at the example of linearity evaluation. We have carried out the LCMSMS analysis of derivatized amino acid glycine in standard solutions. We have analyzed here 11 concentration levels, starting from 0.03 to approximately 1,200 ppbs. And we have data here. The signal is a big area in arbitrary units. And we have carried out four parallel measurements for each concentration level. And we see here we have data over several orders of magnitude. So it is a good starting point to evaluate linea linearity for this kind of data. And so let's do this for this table that we have. Of course, the first thing that we do is we graph this data. And I've prepared the graph here where we on the x-axis have concentration and signal on the y-axis. So pretty usual, the standard uh, graph when we are evaluating linearity or doing calibrations. And what we also do is let's add a trend line here, a linear trend line, and also let's display equation and R squared value. And now starting to visually evaluate what's going on, we see actually that the highest concentration is deviating from this linear regression line and we will leave this data out of interest. So it's not linear and let's mark it as well. So now when we look further, it's difficult to distinguish what's going on here on this lower section of this curve. So let's zoom in this lower concentration and let's see what's happening. And we, again, we see here that the lowest concentration is also deviating uh, from this linear line and we should, so this is not linear and we should leave that out from our data as well. So let's mark and let's re-graph for the whole range that we think it's linear. And when we wish it, visually look at this graph, it actually does look linear, uh, but to confirm it or make sure which range is linear, it's, uh, we need to do the residuals graph. And in order to calculate the residuals, uh, we need to start by to calculate the, the signals and to, and to calculate uh, these uh, signals based on this curve, we will first have to find uh, the slope and the intercept of this curve. And let's use a Linus function that, um, so we will need the areas, uh, the signals, the big areas that we had, the concentrations. And what we will do here in this Linus function is that we will not force it through zero. So we'll keep it um, one and one because the zero would for the first, uh, for this first, the zero would force it through uh, the zero, but we don't want that. So now we have obtained the slope and the intercept, and we can find this calculated signal. And in order to do that, we take the concentration, we, uh, it's times the slope plus the intercept. Because this is a calibration curve, it means that for all these calculations, the slope and intercept will remain constant. So I'll mark them as constants and let's calculate them for all of the concentrations. And next, of course, we have to find the residual value. And for that, we take the experimental value and subtract the calculated value. And again, let's do it for all the concentrations. And now what we do is we graph the residuals. I've made a graph here, prepared it. So again, the concentration and the residuals. And let's mark all the, this area that we think that we is linear. So from 0 0.02 to 798. And we can see right away from here that these two highest concentrations are actually not linear. 
um, and we should also leave these out and in order to now uh, do we have to to continue we have to recalculate uh, this uh, calibration and we will find a new slope and new intercept by simply just using this range that we have uh, made made smaller so we are leaving out these two highest concentrations again and in order to recalculate this uh, residual graph we also have to recalculate the signals and we will use this new slope and intercept data for that and we will only do until here and for the graph let's also leave out these two concentrations it's not really helpful for for us so now we have this graph um it looks it's we have all the data but it's still somewhat maybe a bit difficult to interpret because we have data for four parallel measurements let's do this that uh, let's find actually an average of the residuals for each these concentrations so we have these concentrations left here and average and let's just use this average value now so now the graph is already a bit better so we have less data it's because it's average data so uh, and we see some points above the line and some the below the line but there's still one more trick that we can actually do and it is to use the logarithmic scale for the concentrations. Just let's see it for a better visualization. Uh, let's use this uh, and let's so now switch to this logarithmic scale. And now we see a bit different graph. So it's because it's logarithmic now, it's uh, more easily interpreted. And we can see right away that there are these points are randomly around this uh, x-axis and uh, we can say that this calibration curve is linear in this range from 0 0.2 to 158. There is um, one more thing that we can calculate is the relative residuals because for example in Santa guideline they give uh, guideline guidance that these relative residuals residuals value should be uh, below 20 percent so for that what we do is we take the residual value and uh, divide it with the signal that we have and in percentage and we see here that if, of course some are minus and some are plus but they are all um, absolute value is below 20 percent so which which means that also based on the santa guidelines we can actually say that this calibration is linear in the range from 0.2 to 158.